it up for 30-something seconds talking to Max behind the scenes. Didn't even know I was uh, back on air there because I was busy during the break trying to find the BBC and Irish Times uh, headline where a few months ago the head of Ireland's Central Bank, a former Goldman Sachs guy, uh, said, we want Ireland to be run by foreign banks. Yes, we don't owe this money, but it's good to owe it. So, so this is too big to fail. Banks that did all this betting, and then they get governments to sign on. Then the governments come in and reduce the country's credit rating and say, now you've got to pay us, the people you just bailed out, even more money. Yes, you bail the banks out, then you pay them interest and in taxes and carbon taxes. That's in Reuters today. But I did find this one, Irish Times. Ireland's future depends on breaking free from bailout. Remember, Ireland was this shining, wealthy example suddenly of Europe. And then overnight, they sign on to the euro. They're imploded. They're in debt to the bankers. Max, you're an expert in this. I mean, how do you describe a fraud this overwhelming to people? The bankers, the, 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 this inner coterie of six global banks, they engage in mass fraud. And then they have all the government officials as their former alumni openly being paid off by them. And they sign you over. I mean, I saw in Greece where you're about to go. Where hundreds of islands worth billions apiece that Greece has are being given in some cases to American hedge fund, uh, hedge fund owners as payment to them for fraud they created. I, I mean, this is like I rob a bank and I get a gold medal for it. I mean, this is insane, Max. Well, it's like uh, what we used to do on Wall Street, the leverage buyout or a hostile raid. You use the collateral of the company, or in this case, the country, as the, as the collateral for the loan that you use to take over the company or the country, then you sell off the component parts and you keep what's left as the profit. So this is, you know, Greece is only a $300 billion country, so it's not even as big as Walmart, one U.S. company. And that's why so they, they want to implode pay. countries, because then they get to buy them up for pennies on the dollar. Right, and you mentioned it before, you know, the question is how, how does this all happen and why so, you know, has it gotten so out of hand? And you mentioned it earlier when you talked about repeal of Glass-Steagall, that in 97, that was a huge step in the, in the wrong direction. But then in 2000, at the very last few moments of Clinton's administration, you had the introduction of the Commodity Futures Modernization Act. And this allowed banks and, and fund managers to go from that, let's say, 10 to 1 ratio that you were talking about earlier to 30, 40, 50. 60 to 1 ratio. And so they were able to borrow. In the case of Greece, for example, it's a $300 billion economy, but the debts that are being made against Greece equate to 3 to $4 trillion in derivatives and credit default swaps. And there's no end to the negative bets that can be created because you just create them at the flick of a switch from nothing. They are, they're, they're just produced electronically. So no matter what the Greek people do to say that they're going to pay off whatever debts that they never incurred to begin with, Wall Street will just create 10 times more of that in a negative bet and saying, oh, well, it doesn't really matter because, in fact, you owe us 10 times more. And then Moody's and S&P and Fitch, the so-called neutral credit rating agencies, who are also in on this basically cartel, this mafia, they are constantly downgrading the bonds of Greece. And, of course, this is making it impossible for them to get out from under this mafia control. So, yes, that is correct. They want to be able to buy islands. They want the airport. They want the lottery. They want the transportation. They want the infrastructure structure for they don't want to pay more than a penny on the dollar for it and it's a hostile raid coordinated by the government george Papadreou, the prime minister is involved in this he's committing an act of tyranny as described by the people there in greece as well as these funds and and john uh you know uh, lloyd blankfein ceo of goldman sachs was in greece just two years ago with john paulson who's one of the biggest hedge fund managers in the world they had a meeting across from the acropolis discussing at that time and this has been recorded how they would call carve up the destruction of the country, and John Paulson started making these incredible bets against Greece, just like he made those incredible bets against American housing, making those subprime bets that made him over a billion dollars in profits in one year, betting against American That's housing. That's right, because they... Using inside information that was passed to him from Goldman Sachs. That's why Lloyd Blankfein, the CEO, is facing possible perjury charges in front of Congress and the Department of Justice because he's lied about his relationship yeah. with the fund managers in passing inside information. And on that note, let me just make a quick uh, observation here. It's come out recently that senators and congressmen in Washington, this is really incredible, Alex, they are exempt 
from any insider trading law. You can look this up on Google. If you're a Washington senator or a congressman or a staff member, you can trade on inside information completely outside of any law that's supposed to prohibit that. You are exempt from any of those laws. So the people who manage money in those circles, they're constantly making 10, 20% more than the market because they're saying they're such astute money managers. But there's a direct pipeline. No, that's why people get into market. Congress. That's why billionaires will, will pay $100 million to get into Congress because they can make another billion out of it. But, but let's stop there and explain something to people. The Democrats are saying give us more government, go into more debt because they're bought and paid for by the big mega banks. The Republicans are saying slash everything with austerity but not so we can get out of debt. No amount of slashing, and I've seen the numbers, would get anywhere near getting us out of debt. It's designed, so folks need to understand that. These Republicans saying austerity, privatization. Austerity and privatization means being gang raped by the offshore banks who control both parties and the leadership. And uh, there's the headline, insider trading rules that don't apply to Congress. Uh, we've got the Wall Street Journal uh, and uh, others. Uh, and Forbes. That's Forbes on screen for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers in case you're a new listener uh, or watching on PrisonPlanet.tv and, and, and think Max is making this stuff up. Uh, on screen, Forbes uh, right there in your face. And that's from uh, June 1st, just a few days ago. So this is the criminal takeover. It's why they're so arrogant. It's why they're setting up the police state here domestically because they don't want you to take your government back and prosecute them. So understand, you could cut everything. You could get rid of all entitlements. You're talking about less than a couple trillion a year max. They have created 1.5 quadrillion in derivatives. They've had their criminal agents and government worldwide, they put their people in everywhere, sign on to the debt. They tell you it's your debt, and now you have to give them all your infrastructure, raise your taxes, cut your Social Security, take your private pension funds, take the veterans' pension funds. It's all happening debt bondage. In closing, Max Kaiser, what do you make of the good news, though, with the robo-signing suits and all the rest of it, and Bank of America, CBS News, having one of their branch bank seized the deputies threatened to take the money out of the cash register uh, out of the bank till to pay the family that had their home that they never had a mortgage with Bank of America they never had a mortgage they paid cash and Bank of America knew this but still all over the country in the world banks are taking houses that they don't even own I mean this shows that the facade of these crooks in suits is imploding well there's, there's another big side to that story uh, the side that you described, and I've been listening to the show, and you've been talking about it, uh, the fact that uh, the banks have e illegally been foreclosing on folks, and that's after they illegally induced them to take on mortgages outside of the law to begin with. But there's another big side to the story, is that once they made these illegal mortgage loans, they packaged them and sold them to foreign investors and foreign banks as a securitized loan. And now the banks at these foreign banks are saying, wait a minute, you sold us a, a 20, 30, 50 billion dollar package of securitized loans, but we know reading the papers in the US that those loan documents don't exist. So these, these securities that you sold us are invalid, and now they're trying to push those back to the U.S. government. And the U.S. government, as you also reported, are buying 98% of their own treasury bills, and they're buying some astronomical sum of their own treasury paper. Wait, because I thought it was 75. Don't want to buy U.S. paper I thought it was 75, either. Max. You're saying 98%? You're saying well, the number that you quoted earlier on the T-bill market was over 90%, over 90% over on the yes. T-bill market which is the very liquid paper that they are, they're not buying anymore. That's not the... But the issue here is they're, they're also... selling mortgages in these packages when they don't never even own the house. This isn't just they're selling bad loans. These, I mean, why shouldn't they, though? If they're going to engage in all these crimes, Max, why not go all the way? Well, th this is why the, you know, you talked about austerity measures. In the United States, the poison on offer is not austerity. The poison on offer is inflation. And that's why in the U.S., the problem is the food and energy prices are skyrocketing because to pay for all the malfeasance, the government is creating more and more and more money, the things that Ron Paul talks about all the time. So the average American is having their food and energy prices go up in value. Absolutely, Max. at the same Max. time, their house prices are falling in value. You're so right. 
getting squeezed on We're out of time, time Max. MaxKaiser.com. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com. See you back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central. We'll have Max back later in the week if he can on the inflation bomb. That's how they're robbing you. They're crooks. Wake up. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.